Hello, tonight's COVID-19 shutdown, JKA Karate Kata seminar will be on Gankaku, the crane on a rock. Uh, this is a very, one of our older kata. Its Chinese origins are apparent in the signature move of the crane, and the, which can be seen in the crane style of Kung Fu uh, schools. And, uh, in China. Uh, this kata requires a lot of balance, so people that try to do it in tournaments it's a risky move. If you keep your balance well, maybe you can get a good score, but of course many people uh, totter a little bit in these movements and uh, they get what they get. Uh, the kata has a lot of darting movements, up, down, back and forth. It may, reminds you of Empy, except that the crane is a lot larger bird than the swallow. Um, I like to think, my, when I try to get a sense of the feeling of especially this movement, I like to think of it as you're performing the kata on a very uneven surface, which of course in, in a uh, self-defense combat uh, format might be very true. So, I envision, for example, rounded boulders in a stream where you, if you have to jump to a boulder, you may only have room for one, a one-footed stance. Okay. Uh, so in that spirit, and to discover the spirit of the movement, I invite you to do this exercise. Find a platform, sturdy platform, and jump up to this movement onto something. And I think it will give you a feeling of, of how this movement might be used if you were in a really sketchy environment. Okay, okay. Gankaku. Let's do the kata together once, and then we'll start the analysis. Hey, great. Gankaku. Yoi. Each. Ni. Sun. Chi, Wu, Rook, Chi, Hats, Kok, Jo, Eat, Ni, Sun, Chi, Wu, Rook, Eat. Primary bunkai for this movement is a block of punch. 
All right, so these two movements, Jodan attack, Chunan attack. Next movement, Chudan, Chudan. Okay, secondary Bunkai, Jodan attack, grab the fist, pull down, then punch the opponent twice. But to do the primary Bunkai, just like on five, you have to bring your hands only to here, now don't bring them back, so that your left arm is perpendicular to the way you're facing. So your, your block is out in front of your body. So we're at one, two, three, four. Next one. Down block. Okay. It says in the it says in the book that you should stomp. And and certainly all the modern competitors stomp on this movement. And even in Karate Do Kyohan, it says to stomp. In the oldest Karate video I found, which I sent to you, uh, they didn't stomp, they just moved their foot to the side. Like Ham 5 is now. But they don't, they don't, they say stomp, they don't say Fumikomi. So, maybe it's just a, they just left it out, and that's what they mean. So obviously, if this is Fumikomi or stomping, it could mean you're stomping on an opponent's foot. But the other thing they don't mention is why, why from here you would make such a crazy motion as this anyway? The opponent's obviously behind you. Okay, do it this way. The opponent is behind you. Okay, so you you are picking up the leg and putting it right back where it was and face the other direction. So my thought was always that on coup three, that the opponent here is that somebody's sweeping this leg. So you quick have to avoid the sweep and then make the block. So that I think if you think of that, you'll give good good sense of the feeling of the movement, even though I, at least in what I've seen recently, I have nobody mentions that and the book doesn't mention it. Next, Kosa Uke. Okay, the important thing in executing this move is to strongly close the hips, squeeze the groin muscles, then pull down, just like Kung Ku Dai. But, and again, the Boon Kai, just like Kung Ku Dai, if you're blocking a face punch, and you just pull it down to here, um, it's kind of a so what movement, but normally it would be grabbing the wrist and turning around and breaking their elbow over your shoulder. It's a st standard bunkai in those kinds of movements. Obviously, you can make it into something else. Okay. From here, Nidan Gary, Kosa Uke Geidan. Then again, Kosa Uke Geir. Important thing about this is that again your hip strongly closes and your fists are fairly close together. Okay, and I explained that this could mean three things. Kicks coming for sure, front kick. You either come in close and catch the opponent before they extend the leg. So you would open your arms a little bit to catch the shin between your arms. Or you do the same timing, the same movement before their leg extended and you would strike with both fists to their shin bone. Instead of blocking, you strike the shin bone. Then if your timing is a little late, of course, these can mean in the, that you're blocking, and as you block to the side, the kick to the side, you strike at the same time. 
but off. Now, by the time you make the strike, the kick's been diverted off center by the block uh, to exit. And this one is consistent with starting at the side. If you start here, no choice. You, this, it cannot be this block. So a uh, hey, on five or something jumping up. Boom. That one has to mean striking straight on. But starting from the side, you can do this block. Okay. And again, this position, I described it before. Make sure that your shoulders don't rise, that they're relaxed, that your left arm, in this case, is against your ribs. And your right hand's on top like you're holding a baseball bat. Some people rotate farther over, so they can rotate more when they go in, but basically the position of the hands is the same. I think a baseball bat. And this elbow, you want it to be up, but not so far that your shoulders are going to rise. So you got to find a comfortable position where your shoulder does not rise, but the elbow can't lag down because you're punching down. So those are the key, uh, key factors of that block. So we're here. Ne next movement. Get on the right. Then from back stance, and get a variation to both these, both these movements. Your retraction hikite hand is in a lower position. Remember, if you're chewed on, it's in a horizontal position. If you're jowed on, it's slightly up. Chuda gita, whether the fist is closed or not. Wedge block. Sorry, right, right forward. Okay. The key to wedge block in any of its iterations in this kata is that your hands are in this position, not elbows out or wrists out, but straight. Okay. And the, this position is the same as knife hand block or outside block, same way. And all of these uh, wedge blocks, you think for Bunkai, you can think somebody's like trying to grab you here. You come inside, come inside to throw his arms outside for kakiwake uke. So first one, here. Second one. So important part about this one, it's the same block with the hands turned in, is you, you have to start the movement and the block at the same time. Start your, your leg moving, so your, your left leg moves in. And your in a little faster, then settle into the stance on the out breath and make sure that your stance is still moving when you're finished with the block. Do not step and then still be moving your hands afterwards. You to move your body and hands together. It doesn't have to be all of these kinds of movements. Yes, if you, if you can do it so your foot is actually moving into the stance, that's cool. But your foot can be in position, but your body weight shifts into the stance as you finish the block. Typical timing of slow movement. Quick in-breath, quick in-breath, slower, 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 slower. Don't do slow movements in one tempo. Always quick and then accelerate. Uh, next movement. This is an interesting one that challenges people. Okay, from here, okay, I pull my left leg in. The book says to pivot on the heels, which I can't do because my stance is too long and my legs are too long. I can't make a chichi dachi stance by pivoting from, on my heels from, from side stance. Okay? So, first I believe that this came from the old days when they, when Kibirachi was like this. We, in Okinawa, the, the Funakoshi stands are very small, short. So then, oh yeah, hey, that works. So that's probably the original method. Problem is, uh, Nakayama, Gigo Funakoshi, all these people made the stances longer so we'd have more range in our fighting and all of a sudden we have a problem. 
So, the competitor is now pivot on the ball of the foot, and, and some of them move the left leg, and some of them kind of kind of like pull in a little bit. But the important thing is, don't do this because you can't make a slow move if you're going to jump to the position. So this is supposed to be a wide, a chiji dachi stance. If you come toe. Pivot on the toes, you're almost there. Okay? They become tolerant of people without, without the inner leg strength, like me, to, you, to move the left leg in on this first move. It's okay. Some of the competitors do it. Some, are, some can successfully pivot on the balls of feet and kind of squeeze their whole stance together a little bit. But they're not jumping, typically. This is Kamaya. So you are relaxed. Uh, any of the, any of the positions that I say, if they say it's Kamai, that means there's no need to focus because that's a feeling is that you are getting ready. So in here, I'm just standing, saying, who's next? Come on. Next up, Arnold. Okay, just like hands up. Right. My hands are right, right here. So we come here, left leg is okay. We're looking straight. Looking straight. The very oldest videos, they look straight. Now everybody looks straight here. Then quickly looking to the left as we make the next move. Sen I noticed Kanazawa Sensei's video, he comes up and looks to the side, he looks to where he's going next. I really don't remember the way Sensei Mori originally taught this kata, so maybe somebody else does. But, uh, Anyway, for now, everybody's looking, looking straight. Next movement, Joran Uchiuke, Geranuke, same as uh, many of the other katas, the form. Then two more, one is forward, and the other one is turned behind. Devilishly hard movement, again. Hard to keep your balance. The timing is one, two, three, to make it extra hard. Okay? Very typically, you can almost count on it. In any of the kata that have three movements in a row, including hand shodan, they're all the same. The timing is almost always one, two, three. Next one. If I get it where you can see. Next one. Kosabuke. This stance is very similar to the stance in empty, first move of empty. The important thing is that there's, there's not a lot of weight on the knee. You got to push your hip forward and squeeze your thighs together to rest the downward motion. But you have to be careful because you, the kick's coming in or something. You don't want to move back and come back here. You want to drop straight down, straight down to this position. Okay. Then the force of your block is forward, so that's critical. Um, think of it as a hand getting you done or something. We said we drop straight down. Don't move your weight. So this is the same kind of thing. Wherever your weight is, try to go straight down. Then from here, we. The important thing here is you've got to move to the side, okay, without getting up. So, so many people, whoa, stand up first, okay. So, from the, this deep position, cross your arms and move slowly to the side, okay. Uh, very difficult. From here, this posture is called just called hakiwaki minyu, pulling apart feeling, but it's come on, and it's exactly the same as the last one. Your hands are forward, like hands should have your way position. They're at your side. Uh, now, move your before we moved our left leg in. Now, you, if you can do it and stay in the same place, cool. 
You can just pull your heels in and you're in a wide chichi dachi. That's not like ridiculous, that like, makes sense, then good. But otherwise you can move your right leg in. So what have we accomplished? Back, back in the, the first one, we pulled our left leg in, so we moved this way. Then, a few moves later, we're here, we move our right leg in, so we move this way. When we move both legs in, we stay in the same spot. By moving your left leg in first and your right leg in second, you're now back on the same spot. You've made up for that little, little quarter step. Okay, so it's important to do them in the right order if you if you don't want to have to fudge somewhere else to get back to your mark. First left leg in, second one right leg in. Okay, we are here. Next. This is also Kamai position, they say. Then, this is called Furiyampi, swinging elbow, two of them. Okay. The important thing is that your shoulders don't move, and all the movement is done with the hip twist, similar to this move in Basai Dai. Your hip must make the, the movement. Okay. Or, or Hyan Sandan has this block. Um, the block, it's the shoulder itself, and not doing anything, it's just the hip motion that makes the, the uh, power. This, the meaning of this one can be, since they say, Furi Empi, Ate, Strike, they mean, they mean it to, to, this is to hit the opponent. Okay? But obviously, this, this can also be a block. Okay. If someone's punching from this direction, you can block. If someone's punching from the behind, you can block with this motion. If someone has my, is grabbing my two hands from behind, pulling back a little like this, this would be a release. Okay. Because it's not a very strong grab and the, the, the weak points on the inside so just pull your fist to the inside, so that can be a release. Next, either he's making double punch, wham, boom, like that, or somebody's on my back, and I go, pom, I put his arms up in the air. When I go like this, I can block a punch in the front, and his back elbow will hit this opponent in the side, in the rib cage. The back elbow will hit the opponent in the rib cage. And then you go the other side, you'll hit him again. Or the front opponent. He wants to come around like this on you. Act. Whoop. And bam. You hit him. And up here, you hit him with the elbow in the ribs. Hit him with your elbow in the ribs. So probably this last one, because it's 3 empty, is probably consistent with. Yes, this is a strike, an elbow strike. Okay, so we've gone pum pum. Then we turn, make kosa dachi, and kakiwaki okay again. Okay, make sure your kosa dachi is not, that your front foot is straight forward, and your back foot can be a little bit turned and heel outside, but not too much. Back foot's mostly parallel to the front, and your knees are squeezed tightly together. Protecting your groin, but also the squeeze of your knees and the hip forward foot makes the stance stable. Kosadachi is the same depth as front stance. Okay? Next. Signature movement. We open the hands and come to here. Open the hands. Come to here. This says in the book, this is Keiranoke and Joran Uchiuke, inside form block. But it also says it's Kamai. It's not, it has no Bukai application. This position, your left foot is hooked up behind your right knee. This is a normal down block position. Your left, right elbow should be a little higher than your shoulder. 
You're not blocking, you're just making a combine to make yourself look as big as possible, as tall as possible. So if you're standing on the rock in the stream, you'll be even taller because you're on an elevated platform. Okay, so this is like, look big, look threatening to your opponent with posture. Um, in the old days, they didn't open their hands. More since they didn't open his hands. In the old videos, you always open their hands for this movement. But that's, that's one of the only differences that there's really, if you look at the old videos, if anybody did that, it's pretty similar to, to the new style of doing the kata. We do the slow movements much more dynamically than they used to do them. They used to do them quicker, but uh, I think that's a good, a good change because the slow dynamic tension in the slow movements, that the way we do it now, teaches expansion contraction of, mo of movement of the body and of uh, supporting leg control. And the slower you go, the more of each you have to have. Um, okay, so we're here. Next one. Come to here. Okay, so first let me talk about this, this one a little more. And you're going to have to try this and I hope some of you can feel it. Don't, when you come up, it doesn't matter, hands on the same way. Don't lock your knee straight. Your knee should be just a slight, have a slight bend to it. Okay. Now, in, for a beginner, oh, well, we don't have beginners doing gamkaku, but in front stands, we tell them straighten their knee because they're usually like, you know, they're doing something like this and we want them to get that knee out as straight as they can. But, but advanced uh, stance or, or even arm techniques, we never lock the joint. Like, I'm not that flexible. Some, some people, they call it double jointed, but they're not really double jointed. They just, they just uh, can bend their joints far in the other direction. So when we punch, if we lock our elbow, our punch is starting to go off to the side of the direction of the punch. We have to be a little bit in from locking the elbow in the punch. Okay. And if I was double jointed, the difference would be, you know, it would be dramatic. What straight is versus the joint left. But this position where you're staying on one leg, and I want you to try to feel this. The first one is you stand on one leg and just, just put this leg anywhere. Don't, don't wrap it behind. More like a go into a jute position. The first one, stretch it out and then bend it a little bit. And stretch it out really tall and bend it a little bit. And feel the difference between your balance when you're stretched straight versus slightly bent. Do, do it a few times. See if you can feel a difference. I hope you can feel that it is lightly bent, you can keep your balance better. Okay. Second point, when you stretch, alternate between stretching the knee out and bending slightly, stretch the knee out. Pay attention to how your weight distribution, how when you stretch your knee out, at least if your knee is like mine, your weight starts to go back on your heel. When you bend it slightly, your weight will become evenly distributed on the ball of the foot and the heel, which is the way any stand should be. So alternate between stretch and bend a little bit. Pay attention to your weight distribution and your balance. And there's only a slight difference in the bend. And I hope, I hope you can find that, 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 that position, because it's, you have to feel it. Right? It's hard for me to describe it. Now we're to here. Okay, in the old days we came past the face. Inference was that that is some kind of face block or parry. But now they say just come natural to the hip and lower your weight. Okay. 
they say this is also Kamai. So this makes me wonder. This is Kamai, this is Kamai. Perhaps. But it makes me wonder if there's some like lost meaning from the, the original kata. Maybe there was some bunkai inferred there. This I can see as being Kamai more. And this one, this one could easily be down block. But that's not, not the way they view it now. So, but I'm thinking they're pay, still paying homage to this move going past the face because everybody goes like this. Everybody goes like this. They don't go like this. Which is the direct route. Just put it next to your body. You still come around a little bit. So if you're just coming to Kamaya, why are you coming around? But maybe it's just ritualistic, so it doesn't matter. It makes me wonder. Okay, next movement. The crane's still on the rock. Back fist strike. Keagi, lunge, punch, kia. This is a hard set of movements. First, you, you have to realize that this is a short kick. So you, from here, you do not want, oh first, your knee is pointing 45, uh, 90 degrees to the target. To make keage, you're going to move your knee to the target. To make keage, you don't try to kick. Side kick from here. So quickly your knee has to go to the outside. Secondly, to make a quick transition from side snap kick to lunge punch, you cannot have any tilt in the upper body. You must stay absolutely straight going into this next move. If your body's off balance to the rear, it's going to be do kind of a bleh to get to lunge punch position. So your body has to be absolutely straight when you do the kick. Of course, it still says in the book that this is strike to temple and kick to ribs at the same time, which really infers as a short kick. Um, usually Bunkai is demonstrated as blocking a face punch with the back of the wrist and striking either ribs or armpit with the kick. Okay? So then, the last component of this you really have to pay attention to is that you can't kick here and then step and punch. You have to be moving in as you're kicking. As you're kicking, your hip is moving in toward, toward this, this, this uh, semi-stance. Okay? Because you can't, you'll be, if you go like this and the opponent walks away, you're just dead. You have to step, step to get it. But if your weight's going in, when you come to here, you can make the transition much quicker. So, of course you're making an extra move in there, but I, I, as your personal exercise to test yourself on the, a realistic timing from this position, practice going like this to lunge punch. Practice just stepping and punching, okay? Then practice kicking and stepping and punching. Such that when you kick and snap back, your, your foot goes down very quickly after the kick. So if you can make your kick, back fist strike, step punch, very similar in timing to just step punch, you have the idea. And I'll tell you one thing, if you lean back, you'll never be able to do it. You'll never be able to make that time. Okay, we kick, step, punch. Okay. Then, we turn the other direction. It is really important, and these last few, you're going the opposite direction, they're harder than the first one. You've got to get your head around. Looking at the target while you're straightening up, if you expect to maintain your balance. If you're looking, if your head is moving as you're straightening up, it's very hard to keep your balance because there's no point of reference for your, your eyes, for your balance centers. And of course, 
You're going to lose your balance. So look and go. And keep looking straight. Next movement. Next two movements. Kick and Kibirachi Chudan Punch. I said this in techie. When you go for Chudan Punch, it is so important if you want any impact with this punch that your shoulders are completely turned at a right angle. You cannot be like back here somewhere. Your shoulders have to turn. Look at my stance. It's okay. In Kibirachi, you have about a two inch movement of the hip that you can use before your, your back leg will start to collapse. So you can use that to get your shoulder around. But the main thing that gets the shoulder around is pulling. Pulling of the hikitei on. That makes you makes this corkscrew motion in your middle to get you all the way around. So it certainly isn't stretching the shoulder. So make sure that you understand and the brown belts can't do this. But keep it, keep it out, see. You can still do it. A little bit of movement in the And you can still do it. And that's, that's okay. As long as you don't lose the integrity of the stance. You're going to have to experiment with it. I imagine that showdowns and brown belts won't really be able to do it, but at least you have to keep in mind what you're, what you're striving for. Because your, your body, you can't just think, I'm going to turn my hip a little bit. Your body has to understand the dynamic tension in the legs to know how much leeway there can be. So that has to do with your legs really understanding the stance, not your head. Okay, then another one looking backwards. And another one, another one of these. Again, go to the right angle. Next, I'm going in the wrong direction. Joran, Shutoke. Joran, Tate MP, vertical MP. Pull back, the left hand open. Okay, then turn, same as in hand five, hands over the head, except that now you have to come to this position. From Jodan, some people put their arm out like this, and this is, this is a block, face block. You should have this in a position where when the elbow comes up, you don't have to move the hand. The elbow comes up, center the hand already where it's supposed to be and pull to here, okay? Uh, Bunkai is a block face. You grab, perhaps grab the wrist, elbow strikes chin. Perhaps he's making a reverse punch with the other hand and you grab that and pull it to your hip. Or perhaps this, this wrist you've had all along, you pull that one to the hip, so he's leaning down like this. Okay, then you turn and you break his elbow over your shoulder, same as the uh, other cut. This action of pulling the opponent down in a switching direction is a movement you see in the Aikido. Because once you, once you, when you pull the opponent down, they want to get up. So you're using their action to try and get up, and you're now you're switching. All of a sudden, you're putting force in that same direction, which gets them around to the other side, to where you can break the elbow really easily, or whatever else you want to do to them, throw them, whatever. Uh, then we come to here, and we have one more. Same as before, kiai. And turn behind, nor. And the small point, it's not a small point. Whenever you're doing kata, I hope you all know, regardless of what the previous move was, when you stand up, you gotta keep the supporting knee bent, and then stand up at the end. So when
when you move from low to high, you're going like this in an arc. Like this. You're not going like that. You're not going like this. You're going like this. When you go down, you're going in an arc. Like this. Almost solid. Okay. From up to down. Gankaku is a very tough kata. Uh, conceptually easy, tough to execute. Takes a, a lot of practice to do it even reasonably well. Okay, so if there aren't any more questions, that concludes our COVID-19 seminar series for this week. And I hope that, I don't know which one I'm going to do next week, but I will let everyone know.